Hello and welcome guys. In this video I will be showcasing my new command block computer. But before I show you the computer, I will be going through how numbers is represented in this computer. So let's jump through it. Okay, so normal redstone computers were using redstone dust to represent binary values. If the signal is off, it's a zero, and if the signal is on, it's a one. So in this case we have the number four represented. In order to store and compute these values, we often use redstone torches and meters and pistons. Which uh, is quite slow. So this means that every redstone computer is really slow. In my computer we're using stone and redstone blocks to represent values. So in this case, in this 8-bit word, we have the number 4 stored. So in order to transmit these signals, we are using command blocks. In this case we have a simple clone command, which will take this row and set it here. here. This is the basic principle about this computer. Using commands to alter these lines of code. Many command block computers out there use a scoreboard to store numbers and to add numbers together. This computer only uses this representation. So here we have a full ladder with my own design. It's not that compact, but it's quite powerful. Able to add two numbers, 16 bit each, and uh, add it together in light. Or something. Let me show you. Here we have number 24. We will add it by 4. The expected result should be 24, I guess. So here we go. Quite fast. Try to add a 6. That's the result. We also have a shift left and shift right. Register. Here. This is the shift left and this is the shift right. Here we have an inverter which inverts the 16 bit number. This. Compute it. You see it's really fast. This one only takes one. Uh, here we have a subtractor. So we can try to subtract the number 4 by 2. Result should be 2. So this is the adder, but it inverts the number and then calculates it. Oh, sorry. Here we go. So in order to do this, we are using the twos complement, that number, and then setting the every inbit to one. Here we have the result, which is two. Quite cool. Okay, so now that you know how numbers is represented in this computer, I will be showing you some of the features. First of all, here we have a random access memory, which is both used by the program and the user. The user can program this memory, and the program can also alter every location of this memory. So this memory is 16 bits wide, and it has 256 rows of memory. So you can do quite a lot of calculations and programs and so on. So how this works is that we have this armor stand, which jumps between every row. So here we have a program counter. We can set this to the uh, four. We can jump to row number four. Also, take what's on this row, and add it to the bus, for example, and say mem to bus. So here we have the bus, and we write this bus. And 
also go to this bus and alter the information here. So let's say that we want to write the number one here to this location. You say bus to memory. So this is how the memory works. We also have four registers here, which can be used for storing numbers and so on. And this pretty much works in the same way. Here we have some flags, which is used by the AU. Uh, so when a result is zero, for example, just like the turn on, we can use this for conditional branches. We also have some other future like this multiplier. So we could uh, multiply two numbers together. Let's say we want to multiply four by two, which should be eight. And by using this. So here we have number eight. This here is a stack which can be used for subroutines. So the stack is under the M. 8 rows long, so you can do quite a lot of subroutine jumps without turning. And you can do some pretty cool uh, recursive functions to calculate numbers and so on. Okay, so before I show you how the computer works, I want to show you a simple program I made that calculates the Fibonacci sequence and stores it here with the register 0. You can also see Content of the register zero in this hexadecimal seven second display. So let's run the program. Here we can see the memory pointer going up and down to do the calculations. So here we can see the numbers such as this. So we have two, three, five, the next should be eight, and so on. Now we should be at B. Yeah. And this is an hexadecimal and not decimal. Okay, so now I will be showing you how to program this computer using this programming unit. So, first of all, here we can set PC. So we can jump to this address, for example. You see, go to address. Right, this address. Let's write random number. Say write memory and write. You can also set the memory for one step up and write a different number here. Write to memory. So let's go to the address here. So now I want to show you different operations and addressing modes. So if you look in this book here, we have some different opcodes. The first operation is load. And what load does is it takes a value and loads it into a register. Name a value here. So let's say that we want to store this value here register. Then we set the opcode to zero to this. And then here these two specify which register we want to save to. So in this case it's the register zero. But if we click this lever, we will store it to the first register. So what we want to do is that we want to load register zero with the content of this address here. That address is this address. We can write this to memory. So let's see this in action. Let's tick the computer one time. You can see that the memory pointer jumped up here and stored that value here. Here we have some levers what addressing mode we are having. If we look into this book, we have direct addressing, we have immediate addressing, and we have register addressing. 
So, first one here, direct reversing, takes what's on this memory location and uses that number. Immediate addressing, we can store a constant instead. So I can show you that in action. So now I want to add to the other register, register 1. I want to use the load function. But now we want to store the value 1 here. So we don't fetch it to the memory. Then we can use this immediate address. Let's flick this lever and use the address in mode 1. We can write this to memory. We can take the computer to test how this works. So as you can see, we took this number here and stored it here. We also have one more addressing mode, which is the register addressing. So what we can do is to load a number from the register to another register. So now we want to store it to the same register or register 3, which is up here. So we want to store it with the value from register 1 or 0. zero. So we can write this to memory. What we will see is that the computer will take this number and put it to this address. You see that the load is about here. Uh, you can also use the addressing mode for other forms of uh, other form of uh, operations. See here, here we have a add operation. So let's flip these two levers. So we can uh, alter this for an example. It should be register one. We can use immediate addressing to set a constant. So we want to add one by four, I guess. Write this memory. So what this operation will do is that we will add this number one by four. So let's check the computer. And we see that the number five is here. So we can also store values in the memory. So this doesn't have an addressing mode, so we can only use it zero. So let's say that we want to store this value here in the memory. We want to store the number five. So this number. Let's say that we can store it up here, wherever that is. So write to memory. Well, let's see this in action. What this will do is to take this number 5 and store it somewhere up here. Here we have number 5, it's the number location. Uh, if we look at this opcode, we can see quite some of them. Quite a lot of operations. And all these operations is stored here. We can do So we can also do a jump. Let's do that. That is operation 0010. We're going to be using the immediate addressing. And I want to jump to 0. So let's write this in memory and see what happens. So now we use the jump to branch down here to 0 again. So now we could actually run this in auto mode. And what will happen is basically nothing. We will see the same thing over and over again. That's quite interesting. Load 4. Add 1 to it. And so on. So this is basically how you program the computer. To make the workflow when programming this computer easier, I've created an own assembly language for this computer. I've written a compiler in Python, which uh, 
returns Minecraft commands to uh, set the memory of the computer. So here I've written a program which sorts some numbers using the bubble sort algorithm. Uh, this is quite a high-end program which uses uh, subroutine calls and pointers and so on. I will not go through how this language works in this video, but uh, I will in another one. So now I will be showing you how the result of this program. Okay, to end this video I will be showcasing the bubble sort program which you previously saw in the compiler. This will be a time-lapse video, so you can just sit back and relax. The computer will sort these numbers, so that we'll have the lowest number here, the next lowest, and the next lowest, and then have the highest number right here. So just sit back and relax, and then let the computer do its work. And I'll see you later.